Good day to you all. My name is Harold Andre and I am from Manila, Philippines. I studied Asian music and musicology and was a student of Maguindanaon master Aga Mayo Butoka in the University of the Philippines College of Music. So, let's begin. The Kulintang is a set of eight post gongs in graduated sizes arranged from lowest to highest and laid over a wooden frame. The Kulintang is part of an instrumental ensemble along with other gongs and a skin drum. These instruments are common among the Mindanao region of Southern Philippines. This region contains different styles of Kulintang playing. But in this video, I will only focus on the Maguindanao style. The Kulintang is played by striking the knob of the gong with wooden sticks. Like so. One of the common generalizations of people unfamiliar with Kulintang music is that they are quick to relate it to the bonang of the gamelan ensemble. They might also relate it, though not as often, to the kongwong yai or the chiwaying. Unlike these other gong instruments, one obvious distinction is that the Kulintang has a much faster decay of sound. In other words, sounds are not sustained that long. Because of this, kulintang pieces are often played in moderate to fast tempos with minimal rests and little to no sustained notes. It has been said that the kulintang playing style often depicts the rippling waves of the sea, rapid and quite fierce. With all instruments from the kulintang ensemble playing very fast and dense, it results in a beautiful rhythmic frenzy that one would enjoy all the more if one is familiar with the traditional rhythms of Kulintang music. Some of the most common traditional playing techniques are simply striking the gongs, double strokes, playing two notes at once or what we call sabay, playing grace notes, Damping the gongs. Providing a consistent drone for yourself. Non-traditional playing techniques are also possible if needed in contemporary contexts. Techniques such as playing more than two notes at once, or maybe four notes at once, if you're feeling that abundant in your piece. <laughs> I've also had experiences of changing some selected gongs in the middle of the piece to change the mode or the tuning, maybe a different feel for the second movement. But keep in mind that changing the gongs mid-piece would take some time, maybe a few seconds. So I cannot really do that while playing. <laughs> Traditionally, the kulintang is played with soft wood sticks. Depending on the weight and the material of the stick, the kulintang can either have a harder or softer sound. Hitting the knob with the end of the stick or the middle of the stick, of course, produces different kinds of tones. Sometimes the rim is hit instead of the knob, producing a sharper, more metal sounding tone. In contemporary context, sticks with rubber ends such as those for the agung or the gandingan can also be used for the kulintang to have a totally different and more round tone. Tuning, the main interest of you academics. The kulintang set consists of eight gongs laid in a row with no strict tuning. Traditionally, it is often tuned in pentatonic scale without a strict pitch center, meaning it doesn't matter if it's a major or a minor or even a modal scale for you spicy people. As long as it's for the most part pentatonic with gong number three usually being the root. These are the pitches of the gongs I personally own 
you may choose eight gongs at a time if you want to write a piece for the kolinta. Even though there is no one strict unified tuning for the kulintang, because it doesn't actually need one, <laughs> this does not mean that kulintang players can just put eight random notes in order. Kulintang players, of course, choose gongs that would fit the aesthetic of the music style. Knowing how to choose the appropriate tunings will come, of course, after listening to plenty music examples. Here are some of the traditional tunings I have personally encountered and like. Lastly, I cannot talk about the kulintang without mentioning improvisation. Kulintang music is highly improvised. All the rhythmic frenzy you hear on the recordings and the live performances are, would you believe it, improvised. This is because the kulintang player isn't taught strict written pieces, but rather is taught how to improvise on rhythmic patterns. Of course, we cannot just expect to quickly develop a feel for kulintang rhythmic modes or patterns, let alone understand them by just watching this short video here. Understanding them would obviously take time, but you may have a head start now by just listening to a lot of kulintang music. If you want to listen to the raw sound of the kulintang, I definitely recommend Master Agamayo Butokan's Magindanao Kulintang album which is currently on YouTube right now. For more on some listenings, some of my personal favorites have got to be Gandingan Group sa Dulawan and Kulintang sa Tagig sa Maharlika. They're everything that you would want in a Kulintang performance. Very communal, totally unstaged, with people cheering and enjoying and even trading spots on the instruments. It's just an absolute beauty of an experience. And if, for some reason, that you would want to watch more of me, then you can check the playlist Transfusion 2015, Harold's Graduation Recital, <laughs> yes, <laughs> on my personal YouTube account. In that quite academic performance, I had some experimentations with the different textures for the ensemble and instrument combinations. It, it was a fun student requirement that I recorded. Before we end, let me just finish with a disclaimer that I am a Manila-based musician who studied under a Magindanaon master. She taught me in my language and not hers, not theirs. The Philippines has over 120 to 180 languages, depending on your mode of classification. So she is indeed a master who has crafted a way to teach students in an academic setting, students like me. Furthermore, the kulintang music I discussed here is mostly Maguindanao. And that's only one region from several more regions with their own distinct styles of playing. Quite a lot to take in. Yeah, I know. But I believe that's the absolute beauty of it. I hope you enjoy your journey of exploring kulintang music yourself. Thank you.